Good day, and welcome back to the Vitality Project. I'm Dr. Bob, and I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining me today. In our most recent post here at Your Vitality Project, we did what I think of as the very opposite of what most of us want to do when we're facing what scares us. We dived straight in. You've all heard the, the familiar proverb or maxim, uh, the only way out is through. And this is oftentimes applied to things that, uh, that we're afraid of. The only way out of fear is through it. <clears throat> now, I think that may be fine on paper, but I doubt you'll disagree with me that an actual face-to-face -face encounter with what uh, we've referred to here as the places that scare us, face-to-face -face encounter with the places that scare us, it may be a whole different matter in terms of how we cope, right? I'm convinced that, that we do uh, uh, need to know what's going on and that we cannot transform what we cannot transform what we do not know. So it's important that we get the lay of the land for sure. But I also know that just knowing isn't enough. I think it's uh, important and key that we understand what we're afraid of. In our last post, we talked about getting a three-dimensional understanding of what it is that we're afraid of. But I don't think it's sufficient having that knowledge. I don't think it's sufficient to get rid of the fear. Uh, so I believe it's necessary, but not sufficient. So let me ask this question. How else do we build strategies for overcoming life's challenges? Well, let's start by agreeing that it won't serve us to repress them. The founder of modern psych psychotherapy, Sigmund Freud, put it this way. He talked about repression as forgetting something and then forgetting that we forgot it. <clears throat> That's a good definition. And so what we're trying to do here as a start in terms of a way to move through fear is to remember it and actually to analyze it in great detail so that we can, hopefully with skillful means, eventually learn how to move through and beyond fear. For today, I have an exercise for you. I'd like you to take the, our most recent exercise, which is a bubble map, where we took a primary fear, looked at the various thoughts that radiate out of that fear, picked the most troubling of those thoughts, and connected it uh, to the fear. Uh, this would be a thought that, that uh, gives us the hardest time. I'd like you to review that previous exercise, if you would, right now for just a minute. Read what you wrote and uh, make a quick note of your own stress level, even as you read it right now. So from a scale of one to 10, one being totally relaxed, 10 being completely stressed out, how does this land for you right now reviewing the bubble map? What I'd next like to invite you to do is to spend five minutes in mindfulness practice. We've got tons and tons of examples here in our posts, uh, both on Facebook and on YouTube of uh, very, very simple instructions for mindfulness of the breath. So I encourage you to use that or any other methods you, that you have to meditate and center yourself. And so let's do that for five minutes. And when you complete that, after you've done the meditation, I want you to come back to this initial bubble map. And I want to ask yourself these, the same three questions I had you ask before, but this time after having meditated for, for just about five minutes. <clears throat> the first question you may recall, how does this thought make me feel? Well, how does it make me feel now? The thought that you've identified inside the bubble. How does it make me feel now that I've meditated for, for five minutes? In fact, on a scale of one to 10, after you've meditated, how stressed do you feel now? Reviewing this troubling thought in the bubble map. That's the first question. Second question, uh, how do I think and feel about any possible depressor or fixer, fixer storylines that came up for me around this specific thought? And if you have questions about what I mean by that, just review the previous post because I talked about this at length, the depressor and fixer storylines. And then thirdly, how do I think and feel about any inner requirements that were linked to this thought? So as you review your notes from our previous exercise and you look at inner expectations or requirements, how do they sit with you now? Just to allow yourself to kind of reflect for a moment on, on how strong they are for you, if they've changed at all, any of that. What we're interested in doing here is creating some wiggle room um, through practicing mindfulness, some, wriggle, uh, some wiggle room around uh, the things that, that we're af uh, afraid of, the things that, that we worry about. 
So let's give it a shot and see how it goes today with the, with the exercise, adding mindfulness to the equation. I want to thank you again for joining me. I hope that between now and when I see you next, that you'll stay safe, be well, and come back and join me soon. Thanks again and take good care.